Good morning and welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Oakland. So glad that you are with us this morning, um, beginning of our uh, Black History Month celebration within our worship space. Um, these are just uh, some friendly reminders of welcome if you have joined us or not via Zoom. Um, we ask that you would uh, stay muted until there will be some response to the sermon and time to share prayers as well. Um, you can always use the chat to uh, ask questions or lift up prayers um, or uh, reach out to each other as well. Uh, there will be no bulletin, as you have seen. We'll follow the uh, traditional order of worship. Um, if you would like to see more people and less of the slides, you can move the little two lines in the middle of your screen next to the slides, move it over, uh, make more room. Uh, but as always, we ask uh, that you would have lots of grace for us as we find our way through this, um, as we are using technology. Um, but it is good to see all of your faces. Good to be together as the church. Um, good to know um, that we are part of a body of Christ. Uh, the service will be recorded when the pastor remembers to hit the record button, which is going on this morning. So we will share that with the food ministry uh, afterwards and others who can't join us. Um, Henry is our, uh, Henry Gardner is our preacher today, and he will um, be sharing with us uh, right now a little bit of the uh, significance of Black History Month here at First Press, as well as be praying, um, lead us in prayer this morning. You have to unmute yourself. I think you're still muted, Henry. <laughs> that doesn't work. There you go. Well, first of all, I am in the session room. Uh, I wanted to do this here in the church so that I could feel the spirit and I feel that very much this morning. And thank you for allowing me to share in this worship service. Carter G. Woodson uh, was an educator and historian. Uh, he created the idea uh, and made it into reality, a national celebration of African-American history and culture. This grew out of the 1915 national celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Emancipation Proclamation. Uh, Woodson was highly educated. He earned both his bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of Chicago, and he was the second black to earn a PhD from Harvard. The first, of course, was W.E.B. Du Bois. He helped found the Association for the Study of Negro Life, and in 1924, he helped create a Negro History and Literature Week. In 1926, he announced uh, the first Negro History Week, and he chose February to honor Abraham Lincoln and Frederick Douglass, both born in the month of February. And then on the 50th anniversary of Negro History Week in 1976, it officially became known as Black History Month. The consensus was that a week was not long enough to even begin to address the enormous struggle and achievements of African-Americans in this great country. So this is how we came to celebrate uh, Black History Month. And here at First Church, we have for the last uh, several years uh, made this a month long service. And so for each of our services throughout the month of February, we will recall those contributions and struggles of African-Americans and how their lives are inextricably entwined with all of us of all races and all cultures. Will you pray with me? Holy God, our Father, we celebrate this month. We ask that you will search all of our hearts uh, as we reach back in history and think of how we came to this moment. We thank you for this technology that allows us to worship, although we're still sheltering in place. This allows us to be connected at these most special times. Hold us close through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
I think Dave is going to share the call to worship with us this morning. Thank you. Honored to do that. You know, when Henry tells you that he wants you to speak, you better speak. <laughs> he says, jump, how high? <laughs> Anyways, the call to worship this morning comes from a collection entitled Prayers from Below, which provides perspectives on people living in places of poverty and oppression. Hear the invitation. Come unto the Lord, you who are depressed and you who are oppressed. Come unto the Lord, you who are hungry and you who are angry. Come unto the Lord, you who are underemployed and you who are unemployed. Come unto the Lord, you who are anxious and you who are bitter and frantic. Come to the place of blessings where you will find respite, peace, and joy.
Amen. 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 Thank you, Marilyn. Jay will lead us in our confession this morning. Please join me in the prayer to confession. Holy God, this month we celebrate the ways our African American brothers and sisters have enriched our culture. We also acknowledge our participation in a society that has systematically marginalized and oppressed Black people throughout our country's history and continuing today. Forgive us, we pray, for promoting or ignoring injustice. Help us recognize discrimination. Give us wisdom to know what to do and the courage to act. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bex, is there an assurance? There may be assurance. Uh, oh, my mistake. You're fine. I know you guys need insurance now. <laughs> All right. Here are the words of assurance. Mm. Writing the wrongs of our society seems a daunting task. Mm. Don't worry. God has shown us the way. Hear these words from the prophet Micah. God has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dave. We do have um, the next piece of music. Uh, I'm going to remind you to sing along. You will be muted um, and uh, we can all uh, sing together. <laughs> I will pray every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart I will pay upon the mountain my Lord spoke out of his mouth came fire and smoke looked all around me it looked so fine Till I ask my Lord, is all is mine. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Jordan River, chilly and cold. It chills the body, but not the soul. There's just but one train upon this track. It runs to heaven and then right back. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Amen. Thank you. Now we will uh, turn to our scripture, which is from Isaiah. Um, Jay will read that for us. Thus says the Lord, in a time of favor, I have answered you. In a day of salvation, I have helped you. I have kept you and given you as a covenant to the people to establish the land to apportion it the desolate heritages, saying to the prisoners, come forth, and to those in darkness, appear. They shall feed along the ways, 
on all bare height shall be their pasture. They shall not hunger or thirst, neither scorching wind nor sun shall smite them. For he who has pity on them will lead them. By springs of water will guide them. And I will make all mountains away, and my highway shall be raised up. Lo, these shall come from afar, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sion. Sing for joy, O heavens, and exult, O earth. Break forth, O mountains, into singing. For the Lord has comforted his people, and will have compassion on the afflicted, his afflicted. Our second passage. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty on the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. For I, the Lord love, Lord love justice. For the word made scripture, the word in the flesh, and the word in our hearts. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Joshua. I love that section that says the captives shall be liberated. And I particularly love the end of that, for I, the Lord, love justice. Thank you, Pastor Matt, for adjusting the screen. I know you can hear me, but it might be interesting to see me as well. I have come dressed for the occasion. I am wearing my royal robe because I am a firm believer that I am a descendant of the kings and queens of that great continent. I titled this uh, message, We Remember Lest We Forget. We remember and we shall never forget. Last year marked the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the first slave ship to America. It was the beginning of the millions of Africans that would be captured from the shores of the African coast and subjugated to 445 years of unspeakable brutality, rape, and murder in America. The Atlantic Ocean is the burial ground of over 2 million Africans who never made the crossing, either because they died from the grossly inhumane conditions of the slave ships, or because in the words of that great spiritual, Rather than be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. When the Civil War ended in 1865, the next phase of violence and terror took up where slavery ended, perpetuating the nonsense of white supremacy and the utter subjugation of black people. This continued until the civil rights movement of the 1960s, and it continues to this day. Inferior education, marginalized neighborhoods, poverty and violence, well-planned and executed systemic racism. In moments of feeling hopeless, about it all, I sometimes think that racism is America's curse and we can't seem to shake it. And then I remembered that actually hope still lives and maybe 
king's dream shall never die. It is the Christian faith that keeps us hanging on. Isaiah said it, for I, the Lord, love justice. Thank you, Isaiah. We believe it, and we shall always pursue it. There can be no black history without recounting the story of the bravest person in all of American history, Harriet Tubman. She freed herself. She returned to the South 19 times, and she led 319 slaves to freedom on her Underground Railroad. Tubman carried only two things with her. She always carried her rifle and she carried her Bible. And if they tried to capture her, she would shoot them and pray over them. There was a $40 million bounty on Tubman's head. That would be about a billion dollars today. And they wanted her dead or alive. That was the value of what she was taking from the slave owners. They never captured her. She was presented with a gift from Queen Victoria for her bravery. All who follow to this day owe a great debt of gratitude to that great and bravest of them all, Harriet Tubman. After the war, Reconstruction was to secure the rights and freedom and economic opportunity for the freed slaves. Their descendants are still waiting. There can be no individual reparations for the descendants of the slaves. My great, great grandfather and my great, great grandmother born into slavery are dead. There are and cannot be any reparations to them or to their descendants or to their ancestors who had their freedom stolen, their humanity stripped, their very souls destroyed. No, the reparations in my view must come in investing in impoverished black neighborhoods, raising the academic achievement of black students in neglected school systems, advocating for the sustainability of black colleges and universities by creating substantial endowment funds these are the institutions that continue to do this day to educate most black children in higher education. By ensuring adequate access to quality health care, that is where reparations should be directed. But let's be clear, whatever they are, no matter how much money, they can never ever make up for the 245 years of uncivilized American history. In celebration of Black History Month, it is important that we call out the names and historical moments of a short list of never to be forgotten. I always love telling the story of the great Marian Anderson and I will always tell it. Marian Anderson was hailed by Arturo Toscanini and many in the classical world as having the greatest contralto voice ever heard. She had sung in all of the great halls of Europe. She had sung before all of the reigning monarchs. She was scheduled to sing in Constitution Hall in 1939. The Board of Governors of the Daughters of the American Revolution refused to let her give that concert in that hall. Eleanor Roosevelt resigned from the board in protest. The concert was moved to the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. 75,000 people turned out. Millions heard the concert all over the country. Here, Anderson, who had graced the stages of Europe, could not sing in her own house. That is part of American history and should never be forgotten. Phyllis Wheatley, the first African-American male or female to have her works published. She was a very well-celebrated poet and born in the late 1700s and died in the 1800s. Dr. Charles Drew, many of you have heard the story about his work in uh, typing blood and making sure that people could get blood transfusions um, once their blood types uh, were known. Frederick Douglass, if you read nothing else in African-American literature, you should read his The Fourth of July speech. 
It is the most searing indictment of slavery ever written. And then all of the others that you know by name in sports, um, there was Althea Gibson before there was a Venus or Serena, um, but denied to play in many courts in the United States. And Rosa Parks, the record needs to be made straight and plain. Rosa was not tired that day from working. Rosa was tired of giving up her seat for white people to sit down. And she decided that day, others had actually protested before, women had protested before black women, but they then reluctantly moved to the back of the bus. Rosa would have none of it. And so the rest is history. These are just some of the giants. These cannot all be chronicled here. The list is far too long. That is volumes and volumes of bib bibliographies of black American history. And what about history today yet being made? Barack Obama, Michelle Obama. Kamala Harris was born 13 blocks from this church at Kaiser Hospital. For all that will be written about Georgia, there's one name that will go down in the history books for all time, and that's Stacey Abrams. She nearly single-handedly, although she'd be the first to say, no, there were all these others, and it's true, who were part of that movement, but she led it, she made it happen, and she delivered Georgia, and she delivered the first African-American senator from that state, Raphael Warnock. The late Barbara Jordan, a name that many of you may not know, she was a Congresswoman from Texas and well on her way to having her imprint on American history. In fact, it is already there. One of the most eloquent speakers of her generation. The list of others making history in the arts and letters, classical music, sports and entertainment, science and medicine, the first of this and the first of that, some of those people who were the first have said, in fact, one very well-known person said, I'm almost embarrassed to be the first because there should have been many, many, many before me. But for racism, rampant discrimination, I just happened to get there first. When I was in junior high school, I was active in the youth council of the NAACP. I participated in all of the marches. They bombarded our churches. They bombed our schools. They sprayed us with fire hoses. They attacked us with German shepherds, but we marched on. I was among them and landed on the front page of the Florida Times Union of Jacksonville in 1960, sitting at the white only lunch counter. We knew full well we weren't gonna be served. That wasn't the point. In fact, we didn't want the hot dog anyway. We're making the point that we have the right to sit and eat where we please. The history made today will be not just individual achievements. Those will continue to mount. We will be remembered most by these questions. Did Black Americans reach parity with whites in education? in income, business opportunities, access to quality health care, were voting rights not infringed upon, denied, obstructed? Was poverty among Black Americans substantially reduced? Was police violence against Black Americans eradicated? Were Black young men not thrown into jail or prison on frivolous charges and locked up for years? The answers to these questions will be our history tomorrow. But let it be our history, and more important, let it be our legacy, that these questions will have been put firmly to rest and the American creed will have been fully realized with liberty and justice for all. Will you pray with me? Quoting from that anthem that is very special to me, written in honor of the emancipator, on the occasion of his birthday, February 12th, 1900, in Jacksonville, Florida. Let us pray. God of our weary years, 
God of our silent tears. Thou who has brought us thus far on the way. Thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in the path we pray. Lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand. True to our God. True to our native land. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Henry. We have a chance to uh, respond to this text, to respond to uh, Henry's um, sermon, uh, story, or a way, knowing that uh, God speaks, the Spirit speaks to us as a community. You can chat, use the chat, or you could speak out loud if you desire. Um, lift up, continue the conversation as we step into this celebration of Black History Month together as a community. Well, several of you are using the chat. Maybe we'll let um, it sit and we'll reflect. Um, I think Marilyn has another uh, piece of music to share with us. So I'll invite uh, Marilyn and Aaron to, I think they're there. I wanna be 
Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Marilyn. Such a gift to us all. Let us lift up uh, prayers of the people. Uh, there, you can uh, raise your hand and uh, I'll hopefully be able to see you, or you could type them in the chat as well. You know, to lift up um, those who are in need, also can give thanks for uh, things you're grateful for as well. Is there any who have prayers this morning? Yeah, Minovia. Um, I like to pray for my teachers, especially because um, we just had lots of assessments, which means extra grading and our report cards are coming up. So um, I pray for them since they have to spend their weekends grading students' report cards. So lift up prayers uh, for teachers, report cards. Uh, Margie's lifting up prayers uh, for Eric, who has knee surgery this Thursday. So we lift up that prayer. So prayers for Larry's uh, sister, Darlene, who's recovering from surgery, and their son-in-law, Rick, who's recovering from an infection in the leg. Other prayers, those who lift up, want to speak them out loud. Yeah, Judy. We can't hear you yet. <laughs> prayers for the mothers who are at home with their children and working full time in the home while opening packages of string cheese and cooking macaroni and cheese and supervising schoolwork and responding to their bosses in 30, 40 emails a day. Um, and it is largely a burden carried by the mothers. I know their fathers who are doing it, I know, but it, it's, uh, there's a New York Times article about it, and they call it a, um, a, 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 never mind. Look at the New York Times. It was a wonderful article. They've been abandoned. So we lift up uh, prayers for uh, mothers with kids at home, working jobs, as well as being uh, assistant teachers or full-time teachers as well. But we lift up that and the inequity of that as well. Yeah, Dorothy. Um, this is sort of a combination of prayers of the people and um, your last invitation to reflect on the sermon and the scripture. But I want to offer prayers of thanksgiving and gratitude that um, we are blessed to have Henry Gardner among our mm -hmm. um, members and his willingness to play such an ongoing leadership role in our congregation. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I want to offer prayers of thanksgiving for his message. Um, you know, while, while none of it is new news, um, to sit and listen for 15 or 20 minutes of an extended recitation of what he so aptly called our uncivilized history in this country, mm -hmm. so sobering. And, um, you know, while there's much to celebrate in new history that we're creating, there's much to grieve and be saddened by. But I just especially loved his discussion of reparations, which seems, you know, so obvious. Um, and perhaps, perhaps, perhaps we can frame the discussion in that context rather than just the perpetual fight in Washington about budget and dollars and how much is enough and how much is too much. So thanks, thanks be to God. Yeah. Thanks, Dorothy. We also uh, lift up prayers, or Gay has lifted up prayers for the new uh, police chief in Oakland, Laurent um, Armstrong. So lift up prayers for him as he steps into this long time. Um, resident, grew up in Oakland, um, and been in the police force for quite some time. So we pray for Laurent. Others? Minerva, do you have another prayer? Yes, sorry. <laughs> um, I pray for my parents and my um, teachers that helped me at well, my deaf teacher, so that's what I call them. I have an upcoming IEP, which is a meeting to see how I'm doing in school um, as a deaf student, and it's always really stressful. My mom has to fill out lots of papers and stuff to get ready for it, and the teachers have to meet together, so I pray for all the people that do that. Mm -hmm. So first for Monrovia's IEP coming up. Um, Lorraine, you want to lift up first? I want to say prayers for these United States with these in the United States being in quotes, 
and for and I also want to pray for pray for the changes that will come that came recently in the form of our vice president mm. previous change of our first vice our first president Barack Obama changes will come so I pray that we continue to pray for changes that will come we pray for changes that will come thank you The others lift up prayers. Let's take a few moments. Um, I'll guide us in prayer, and then Vex will put up um, the Lord's Prayer for us to pray together as well. So let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks uh, for the space to gather together as community. Uh, we give you thanks for the uh, the work you give us, the community you give us, uh, we give you thanks for this diverse community. We give you thanks for the service of Henry and others. Uh, we give you thanks for the good things we see as we uh, know people that are uh, getting vaccines. We know that the preparation at the Coliseum to give more vaccines to residents. Give you thanks for little echoes. We are uh, hopeful signs we see of uh, making it through this pandemic. We ask that you would give us strength, that you would give us perseverance, that you would guide us. We especially ask for your strength and perseverance as we think about the uh, deep-seated uh, racism within our society, it's within our institutions, within our um, lives, within our beliefs, uh, even within our churches. We ask that you would, by your spirit, be giving us uh, reflection, be giving us uh, understanding of where we need to confess, and the necessary repentance to bring uh, healing and hope within our larger society, within our neighborhoods, within our schools, and within our own lives. We do turn to you uh, as a prayers together, praying as Jesus uh, taught his disciples to pray. And our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you now to uh, find your communion elements. Hopefully um, you see that in the weekly email, but you can have them ready each uh, week from now on. It's a way that we uh, believe we can connect to each other, knowing the importance of this ritual together, being able to see that we are one body. Uh, invite you uh, uh, thinking about uh, uh, the stories um, that Henry shared, as well as the stories of scripture. I was thinking a lot about how many times Jesus got into trouble because he invited those who were excluded um, those who are on the margins of society, he invited them to the table, right? Uh, as we may say, the communion table, the table of sharing together. Um, think about the many practices of the church uh, throughout um, U.S. history, at least, the exclusion of Black Americans, right? Exclusion of those. Um, and I think about uh, that practice of Jesus to break down those walls and invite in and uh, to be God's church around the table. So I invite us to think about that as we pick up our bread and our juice or our wine, um, the welcoming of God. Um, maybe it is the inclusion, depending on where you are in society, and maybe it's your inclusion at the table or your invitation of someone else at the table, or maybe you need to leave your own table and join another table of where there is more of God's uh, beauty, right? Of the diversity of who God is guiding us to be. But let us uh, take the bread that we have Break that all over our computer. Um, we lift it up as a knowing uh, Jesus was with the disciples when he broke his broke the bread, uh, thinking of his broken body. I also lifted up the cup as part of the Passover meal, uh, saying, "Do this in remembrance of me." I invite you to put yours up to the screen so people can see one of the element, knowing that we are one body together. Um, you don't have to dip yours in if you don't want. You could take communion however you desire, but that is how I will invite us to. May we take and eat.
Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for these elements, this bread and this wine, how they connect us to the years and years and years and years of your church. May you give us strength and perseverance. You know that as we are reflecting upon Black history during this month, that it remains and continues to be as we wrestle with our histories of racism, our histories of hurt, our histories of exclusion. We need more and more your strength and your perseverance to continue on, to find real healing, to find deep wholeness as a community, as a church, as a nation. Guide us always. Give us this imagination, this strength, and this courage through your elements, through your body. That one, that we are one body. We are many parts with so many gifts. Show us in each of our own ways how we can bring about this healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Know that it has been a part of the Black History Month celebrations to invite all the membership, including uh, younger uh, members into this space um, to be an active part of this. And so we are gonna invite, uh, Monrovia is gonna um, read a poem today that she wrote uh, several years ago for the MLK oratorical. Um, I don't know if it is, I don't think it's memorized this time, but it was at one point and now she's gonna read it to us. So you can unmute yourself and read it. Hi, I'm Monrovia, as my dad said. Um, I'm going to be reading a poem called Remember the Radical Woman that I wrote in fourth grade. Um, sometimes the women who did most of the work of the Black freedom struggle are forgotten. Let me help you remember. Jo Ann Robinson created the Montgomery bus boycott. Remember her. After leading a 2000 person march, college student Diane Nash convinced the mayor to end segregation in Nashville. Remember her. Viola Luzio, mother of five, drove from Michigan to support the Selma March and was killed by the KKK. Remember her. Ella Baker helped organize the Freedom Rides. Remember her. Thousands of churchwomen, registered voters, gave money and sacrificed for the movement. Remember them. Girls like you and me marched, faced fire hoses, and filled the Birmingham jails. Remember them. Septima Clark, Fanny Lou Hammer, Virginia Durr, Rosa Parks, Angela Davis, the list goes on and on. Remember them. Let us be like them. Let us be radical women. Thank you. Amen. Thank you for sharing that, Monrovia. Um, always good to uh, hear poems and remembrance. We have a few uh, announcements of our life together. Um, I think the slides will come back up. Um, we will continue with Bible study uh, as we have been. Oh, first the support us one. Um, remember that you can uh, always, the ministries of the church continue and the expenses of the church continue. So this is our passing the plate moment right here. You can also... Um, I'm going to read that last line. There's always an uh, opportunity to give to the deacons. Um, you can send a check in with that. Um, uh, we just had a meeting uh, this week of the deacons thinking of how we can support our different membership. So we always need funds there when that is when there are needs that come up. So we give thanks for um, your generosity and ask you to remember that. Um, a few announcements of our life together. Uh, Bible study will uh, continue um, for the next uh, this week. Um, we do have a few, we can go to the next one, Bex, a few events, educational events for Black History Month. Um, we do not have, we thought two hours of Zoom would be too long, um, and so we have two special events. Uh, one is um, uh, the director of the Roots Community Center uh, will be uh, guiding a conversation on health inequities in the Black community. It's on Wednesday, um, February 17th, 7 o'clock, that'll be in our normal Bible study slot. And then we are reading a book together. I mentioned it, I think, last week, Tuscany Coates' Between the World and Me. Um, I have copies of it. I've given many to, copies to many of you as well. Um, David Alexander and Cassandra Flipper are going to help us uh, guide that conversation. That's going to be the last Wednesday. Um, it actually is uh, uh, 
part Lent starts this month. So Ash Wednesday is the 17th. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about that at the same time that we will have this conversation around um, disparities of um, how health uh, plays out within the Black community and within Oakland. Um, there is also a song list as well. Um, it says made by Susanna, but it was not. It's a Spotify song list. Hopefully it came out in your email. It was uh, Henry um, and others gathered that list together. So we'll talk a little bit about that in the coffee hour, but it's an opportunity just to listen to songs, um, many spirituals, freedom songs on your own time in your own place if you're at home. Um, hopefully you can access that and we can help you do that. Now, Women's Circle continues. Um, if you... I have met with many of you, uh, great joy to me. If you have time to meet, to go for a walk, um, let me know. Uh, we can meet outside and appropriately spaced, all of that. Please continue to support the food ministry. I see others bringing in cookies um, Sunday. They're there making sandwiches, uh, hot dog sandwiches today. Um, I cut bread this morning, but uh, you can come in on Sunday and Monday and help as well. I think those are our announcements today, Henry will send us out. Um, yes, as soon as he has unmuted. Will you please join me for the benediction. God may this February and all Februarys to come remind us of our past both glorious and ignominious, challenge us for the work yet to be done to achieve liberty and justice for all. Make it so and go now in peace. Amen. Oh, sorry, I cannot unmute us. I cannot unmute other people. We can watch the post loot at this time. Amen. Thank you, Aaron. <laughs> now we have a time we can uh, pass the peace of Christ to one another. I'm going to stop our recording.